Hello. Hey, hey, it's nice. Hello, guys. I'll let you introduce yourself. So, hello. Today. Welcome, to, <laughs> welcome to Gay Vegan Family Live. My name's Adam. I'm Daniela. And, and to, this is our live. Yeah, this is our live, and we've got a very special guest for you today. Um, we're just going to br briefly bring up the website for it, um, so you know what we're going to be talking about today. So, so exciting. So this is the home of Marissa Miller Wolfson and Laura Delahue. So, so basically, um, we are doing a live stream tonight with Marissa Miller Wolfson, and she is live with us. I think it's four o'clock over there for her. And we're going to ask her some questions. I guess you guys are going to ask some questions as well. But we're going to talk about her book mm. that Marissa very kindly sent to us. And we've already tried some of the recipes. We have indeed. So this is the book we're going to be talking about, The Vegucated Family Table. And this is the film... So I think there's quite a few of you in the audience who've probably seen the film recently. I think those vegan guys... Those vegan guys, I've actually seen them in the chat and they actually watched that documentary before they went vegan. So I know there's a few people who've watched it. So here it is. If you haven't got it or haven't seen it, this is where you can buy it from. And also the book too. So I think we should, we should bring yeah, her in. Yeah, let's bring her in. We'll bring her in. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey, welcome. Hello. Thank you so much. So much Thank fun you. To, to meet with you on a live online after chatting so so much over social media. No, it's an absolute honor to have you on our channel tonight. It, we're absolutely yes. buzzing. Yeah, aren't we, we are a bit, yeah. <laughs> oh, so sweet. So sweet. No, uh, once you sort of got in touch with us, we went and watched the documentary ourselves because it's one of the ones I'd heard of, but I hadn't I hadn't watched it. We'd still we've still got a list, haven't we, of things I we need to watch. Do, yeah. 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 And apparently as a young kid, it is so hard to find time for that, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, it is, yes. At the end of the day. So how old are your little ones, Marissa? Well, my little one just turned five and my older one is about to turn eight. He's seven and three quarters. That three quarters wow. is important. Yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> but ours is three in October and I only realized this week that it's like six weeks away and it's just crazy how quick it goes. So fast, so fast. It's absolutely madness. So... What inspired you anyway? Sort of how did you how did you go vegan? What was your journey, Marissa? So I come from um, a Rust Belt town in the Midwest in Indiana, and I didn't I knew one vegetarian growing up. I made relentless fun of her. <laughs> um, I come from sort of a German American background. My mother's from Germany, and I just always thought, you know, meat was just part of our culture and just it was just who we were, right? And then um, I went, came, moved east. I went to college here. I lived with vegetarians, but I still thought, well, that's good for them, but that's not for me. Um, and then I was at my Unitarian church, um, which I had joined when I moved here. And there was a little English lady, and she, her name was Sheila Dines. And she used to light candles of concern for the whooping crane in, in a hurricane in Florida or things like that. I thought, she's a crazy animal lady. But one time um, she invited me after, during coffee hour to come see a movie um, called We Are All Noah, a documentary called We Are All Noah. And she had invited me to see, you know, the cow at my table and meet your meat and all these things that sounded horrible to me. Um, but then, you know, We Are All Noah sounds wonderful. So I sat down and I watched it. And it was, it was horrible. <laughs> um, I mean, it wasn't, it was wonderful and beautiful, but it just cataloged sort of, it was like a precursor to earthlings. It kind of cataloged all so many ways that animals are exploited, including for food. And I just thought, thought you know, sat there and I thought, well, if I'm an animal lover, which I've always considered myself to be, then I, this is not okay. Like that can happen, but not because of me, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you that can go on, but I want no part in it. So I left vegetarian. I had brought some little brochures with me, and um, I was taking a flight home for my 26th birthday. This was oh my gosh, 
Yeah, this was a long time ago. This was 18 years ago. And um, and I landed having read those pamphlets and I was like, I'm vegan now. I read them and it just covered the environmental aspect. Um, it covered the health aspect and it covered dairy and eggs in a way that I'd never seen explained before. And I said, well, you know, again, I'm, I want no part of this. And I also thought, well, okay, I'll do this for now. You know, I didn't want to commit to it forever. I said, well, I'll do it for now. And I felt great. Yeah. My, um, I had so much more energy. I mean, I sleep maybe six hours a night. It's all I need, you know? Um, I, uh, you know, you lose those extra pounds. Um, it just, I felt, I felt wonderful. And, and most importantly, apart from the physical benefits, I just felt so much more connected to the planet, you know, in this really positive way, because I was doing something every day, three times a day to, um, help animal, the animals and the planet. So it was really affirming. Now that's amazing to hear. It's really good. Yeah. So how did you go? What inspired you to create that documentary, Vegucated? How how did you get on to to doing that? Yeah. So I um at the screening where I decided to go vegetarian, I met a mentor there. Her name was Mary Max, and she was she was the wife of um, artist Peter Max. I didn't really know who he was, but I knew he was kind of you know famous or whatever. And she took me under her wing. And together, we decided to do screenings of vegetarian or vegan themed documentaries um, in churches, church basements, colleges, community centers, um, you know, food co-ops, wherever we could. And uh, we would, you know, host these screenings and have people come. And we just saw the transformation firsthand. And then I, I got to see what worked. You know, I got to see like okay, we can do a screening of Earthlings and it's really profound for the people who stayed and watched the whole thing, but we saw people leave, you know. In the screening, I saw people just really respond to humor. That's amazing. And then I was sitting in Super Size Me in, gosh, 2004, summer of 2004. I thought, you know, someone should just do kind of the reverse of this. We know what not to eat, but why don't we watch people, you know, watch the opposite, watch them, you know, transform after having been on the standard American diet. And we set out to find like some real fast food junkie, but n nobody like that really materialized. But when we were doing our casting, um, we ran across uh, Tesla, Brian and Ellen, and they were just different and you know, they different demographics. We thought maybe different people could relate to them. So um, without any, any experience at all in film, no budget whatsoever. My boss, Mary and I decided that we would just make this film. And, uh, you know, and after having cast these people we're like, yeah, we're totally going to do it now. And, um, and then I hired, hired an intern at NYU Tisch Film School. His name was Frank Metaskin. He ended up being the producer coming on as a producer. He was just an intern, but, um, but I was a nobody. So we, we were nobody who knew hardly anything. And we just decided to make a film. Uh, but it was timely, and I joined a filmmakers collective, and they really honed it with me. Um, and they showed me, you know, what was working, what was not working. It was painful. It was painful to show your work and then have these like real filmmakers tell you um, how it sucked. Um, and and but then you know, so I had to refine it and reshoot some stuff, and then and and then that's how it was born. But it did take seven years. It took seven yeah. years to make. Yeah, yeah, because it's expensive. You know. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. Even you can tell it's low budget. Our film is very low budget, but even a low, low, low budget film costs money. So that's absolutely yeah. fantastic. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Made us vegan. So there's the, those vegan guys. They've got oh a YouTube channel. Yeah, okay. There they are. You know what's funny? So I get the Google alerts, you know, for Vegucated, and I got one recently, and it was in an article quoting those vegan guys. Hey. Oh, hey. You chose so well, three awesome and diverse people make it so really. But thank you so much. That was the idea. So, so yeah, so I was reading this article. I was like, who are these guys? And then so I checked out your YouTube, um, Vegan Guys, and I saw that you have your own cookbook and you're doing all this stuff. And I was I was so flattered and just honored to be part, part of their journey. It was amazing. It, it was amazing to read that. Yeah, definitely. I think it's such, it's such a good documentary in that it's got everything in it because a lot of the documentaries, you know, might focus on the health side of things or, you know, the planet side of things. But yours, it focused on everything 
you know, yeah, so. I try to do, we try to cover all the bases, but I think you can probably tell that our heart is really with the animals with that. And yeah. that's what really spoke to our film subjects as well. Um, and I'm eth an ethical vegan at heart, um, but it wasn't, it was after I was, you know, I, I, I bought it, I was, I like bought into it. And then I was, you know, really getting into the health aspect after that. So when you were doing this documentary and the, you know, these guys were actually learning about the animal ethics, how did that make you feel when they made that connection? Because for me, when I know somebody is made that connection and it might be through something that, you know, I've done with them, it's really quite empowering. So how did that make you feel? Yeah. I mean, it's, there's nothing like it, you know, to, to think that you've had, that you've changed somebody's life in some way and that you've inspired them to, you know, make an act of compassion every day. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's not hard to be vegan. It's easier than I ever would have thought. It was a learning curve at first, but, um, you know, it's, it's no joke. And, you know, initially, especially back then, right. Um, that was, you know, 18 years ago when I went vegan. Um, now it's just getting easier and easier, but still it, it's a kind of a big deal for someone to make that switch and to know that you, you know, played a role in that is there's just nothing like it. Is there? No, there isn't. It's, it, it gives you that goose pimple feeling up your arms when somebody says I had a family get in touch with me recently on Instagram and I'd shared a few posts on my stories about animal ethics and she said you know thank you so much for sharing it because me and my family have now gone vegan and I just wanted to cry I just thought this it's not just one person it's, it's a family <laughs> and, and that think about it well I know and think about it Daniela how that is going to set the stage for future generations, potentially, right? I mean, that's the idea. And so what's gonna be normal for them is gonna be, if they have children, it's gonna be normal for their children and the children after that, and, you know? So, and it's just gonna make everything easier for everybody else to go vegan. The more children do it, the easier it is, you know, for other children. So that must be, it's just so rewarding. Yeah, definitely. You must be so proud. No, definitely. So are you still in touch with the guys that are in the documentary? I am. I am. So um, interestingly, uh, Tesla, at the end of the film, she um, she got a boyfriend there. His name was Harry. They got married and they um, and Harry was he worked for, I think, a cable company or something. I'm trying to remember. And he happened upon like hearing a, a live slaughterhouse. There are these, these or not live slaughterhouse. What's it called? A live market. That's what's called live market. Um, here in the city and they have, you know, chickens and cages and stuff and you just go and you pick them out and, you know, they slaughter them kind of on the spot. I mean, the back room, whatever. Um, they slaughter on the spot and give it to you. And he just heard the sounds and he came home and he said, you know what, I think I want to be vegetarian. So she got back on the ve on the veg wagon because she had fallen off a little bit. Um, and just having a partner in this, I know, you know, how important it is to have a partner how you know, just what a big impact it makes it makes it so much easier so um so they decided to go vegetarian together and then now um they have a daughter her name is also tesla and she's oh is she may be three i don't know but she's adorable and she's also veg or mostly veg um and then um uh, ellen and i we we haven't been in touch lately but i know that her daughter debbie stayed vegetarian and ellen did too for a long time she probably still is i, ha I just haven't spoken to her lately and then brian moved back to california where he's from he started working for the family furniture company and he um met this woman and they uh she was vegan this was when the film came out she was vegan seeing the film inspired him to go vegan again and now they have two vegan children and they're in, you know, the Bay Area of California. So it's it's wonderful to see. And he's also he's like he's owned that part in his role, you know, in, in the film, like he's owned his role. And he's just like he's just running with it. And it's just part of him now. That's amazing. Yeah, that's really good. It's giving me like shivers. <laughs> I know, right. So have you had lots of, you know, what do your family think? You know, when you went vegan, how did they react to that? 
Yeah, I remember. So when I was going home and I brought the vegan literature on the plane, I landed to said I was vegan. I told my mom, it was my 26th birthday. I said, mom, I surprised her with my trip home. Um, and I said, hey, I just decided to go vegan. And she asked me if I was going to be one of those plastic shoe wearing radicals, which is <laughs> really funny because, uh, yes, I am. Um, but it's a b better. It's not just like plastic. It's like better synthetic. But um, she she has since gone way more vegan, you know, um, <laughs> along with me. Um, it's so it's so funny how that happens where there's resistance, resistance, resistance. And then they think, oh, wait. This actually does make sense. And my mother was the one who's always instilled compassion for animals in me. So it only made sense that she would um, be sympathetic and understand. Uh, my brother made endless fun. Uh, my dad, he always cooks vegan. He orders vegan whenever we're home. He's he's supportive as well. When I was pregnant though, he did um, you know send some articles you know, saying, I think one was from a doctor saying, well, you need omega-3s um, from fish. You, you need to eat fish to have a healthy pregnancy and for your children to um, you know, have a good IQ. And I had to remind my dad that I never ate fish <laughs> because I never liked it and we were landlocked and there was really no good fish there um, So in Indiana. So I said, um, well, dad, you know, you didn't really feed, I didn't really eat fish, you didn't really feed me fish. And also I didn't get flax, I didn't get chia, I didn't get DHA supplements. Like, you know, we know how to do this, right? We yes. know how to do it. Um, back then, we, you know, we didn't, people didn't really know. So, um, so yeah, so they've, you know, they had some concerns. Um, I have an aunt in Germany who's morbidly obese and she had concerns <laughs> about it. Funny about it, isn't it? Everyone yeah, has like, what are you talking about, you know? Um, I mean, I love her, but nutrition is not her not her forte. Um, <laughs> but I said, don't worry, you know, I've got it covered. And I did my research and I read, you know, I read what there was to read about uh, vegan pregnancies and vegan children. And I felt totally, totally fine with it. I say over here, we, um, the British Dietetic Association supports um, a plant-based diet for all stages of life. And one thing that I regularly get from the opposition is while well, that association is run by vegans well it's not no. it's an association for dietitians right. and it's not run by vegans and it that seems to be the the thing they're just yeah they, they, they want to excuse it they want to find any they, they want to find any excuse to ignore it and we so we have the same thing we have the, the um, academy academy of nutrition and dietetics and um, so they review all of the literature on plant-based, you know, vegetarian and vegan diets, and they write a position paper. So when I came up with the idea to do the book, um, I thought, well, we really need to get the best person on board. And the person who came to mind was um, Reed Mengels, because she had wrote the Everything Vegan Pregnancy book, which was my Bible when I was pregnant. Um, and so I approached her because, um, you know, she obviously knew about pregnancy pregnancy stuff, but she actually wrote, co-wrote two of the, those position papers on vegetarian and vegan diets wow. for the Academy of, of Nutrition and Dietetics. So, um, so she was, you know, one of the experts who's read everything. I thought, you know, who would be better than that? Nobody. And I approached her and she, um, she said she would come on board and she's, she's done a wonderful job. That's amazing. That's fantastic. So whilst this is on topic, I just thought I'd pop this up from yeah. Bobby. So how did your doctor react when you were pregnant? Right, right. So my primary care um, physician was fine. You know, he had seen my blood work and he was, he loved my blood work. <laughs> my blood work was beautiful. And, you know, <laughs> you know, when you go vegan, everybody sees your blood work. They're like, woo, you know, they're Ooh. so good. <laughs> um, but then I went to, uh, you know, I had, I had an OB. I went to my, you know, the gynecologist that I went to work with, who is a midwife in um, OB's clothing. And I thought, ooh, that's who I really want. Um, but he was so funny. He obviously didn't know his stuff. And he said, um, well, you know, you really need to eat cholesterol for the baby's uh, growth. For I said, well, I actually don't. And he said, well, babies need cholesterol. I said, well, that's okay, because I make it. I'm going to make cholesterol for the baby in my body. Um, 
So that was interesting. But but it was also a reminder that um, I don't know how it is in the UK, but in the US, medical students maybe get an afternoon of nutrition education in all of their medical school. So it's they don't you know, you can't necessarily I mean, yes, talk to your doctor, take you know, take in what you can, but you really need to go to the experts like the nutrition, you know, associations and nutrition, you know, yeah. nutritionists who know about this. There are plenty of nutritionists also who have their own biases, but nutritionists who have seen all the literature on it and read it, you know, that's who you go to. Yeah, it's it's a very valid point what I, you said. I think about. the um, medical school here, I think, I don't know where I saw it, but there was a doctor that sort of tallied up all the hours that he spent yeah. that he spent um learning about nutrition and um and stuff like that and it, i think he tied up eight hours within this whole time at medical school right and there have been yeah there's you can look it up if you google like nutrition hours medical school united states you'll see something you know very similar like 12 hours 18 hours something like that it's just abominable Mm. See, I'm actually a nurse um, by trade. That, that's what I do. Um, and during my nurse training, so it's university, it's degree level, I don't remember doing anything on nutrition. It was just the standard thing. Wow. And so that's, that's surprising because I've always found that nurses are so much better at preventative care. Um, you know, they you know, like, you know, they, they're into prevention, whereas I feel like doctors, so many, I'm just generalizing, but I feel like so many doctors are just prescribing medications, but I feel like nurses just know more holistic stuff, but but it's really disappointing to hear that they don't even have. I didn't education. have a clue about nutrition. Yeah. I've learned it myself through this. You know? well, your, your story is so inspiring. <laughs> I read about it, you know, because we connected on Facebook Yes. And and then I then I was like, who is this girl? And then I looked you up. I thought, wow, what a compelling story. You have such a beautiful story. Thank you. And I love your passion. Um, and you know, and you're making waves, and that's why you're getting pushback, right? I mean, um, you can judge your success by the ire of your enemies. You yes, know? definitely. Uh, this is just it's just really weird. Like a couple of months ago. We're just doing general videos, you know, we're not doing a great deal on YouTube. And then all of a sudden, we're sat doing live streams with yourself. And it's just an incredible opportunity. Like Everything that's happened over the last few months with the bullying and, you know, the body shaming, it was meant to be. It It's just brought us to get it's brought our little community together and we're building a vegan family community and it, it's i'm so glad that everything has happened it's you know beautiful. It's, isn't that how it works i mean people people like to say everything happens for a reason i i don't that isn't part of my worldview or my faith or anything like that but that doesn't mean that that good things can't come out of bad things I remember I was taking this uh, this pranayama course, it was like a breathing, meditative sort of breathing course, and one thing that they said really stuck with me, which is every in everything good there's a seed of bad, and in everything bad there's a seed of good, and so you know there was definitely I, mean, I, I can only imagine how you felt with the bullying, like seeing your family on you know what happened. Just I would be I would be what right, but then that pulled to the seed of like people rallying around you to support you and um you know and it's sort of when you've got a common enemy <laughs> right mm -hmm. you sort of band together a little bit and you find your people yeah I, I was absolutely devastated it was kind of it was just a shock a massive shock yeah. but we're in this little supportive group there's quite a few of us and obviously adam was at home when it happened thankfully and you know it I got over it and then the next day it was like right that's it as a parent no one is bullying vegan children and i just had to do something about it and for weeks i've been messaging so many families i've been going through the hashtags on instagram and searching for vegan families and saying these are the accounts you need to block and be that wary of well, I was so so thankful. yeah i was so appreciative to get that um message from Tina Newman, to, who told me, who sent me the article, 
that quoted you and told your story. And so thank you, Tina, for that. She's she's just so lovely. Um, and I saw my own picture that I had taken of, you know, Vivi the Super Vegan that I was reading to my, which book that my children adore. And that was used on the Instagram, you know, and it said something like indoctrination or something, you know, something dumb, you know, which is funny because they always consider vegan families as being, you know, indoctrinating their children, <laughs> right? But not Carnith families. Are, you're familiar with Melanie Joy. Are you familiar with Melanie Joy's definition yes. of Carnism? Yeah. Yes. So, so Carnism is a given, right? Because it's accepted in society, but um, so we just don't question it. But if something goes against the norm, then that's always put into question. But I always say to myself, okay, this is like, revolutionary and weird now but check back in a generation or two and we're going to be on the right side of history and they're not Damn right. i do yeah. believe that yeah, definitely I yeah i mean our children all i mean there's lots of us in here tonight that have got young children you've got young children <laughs> there is a generation here and hopefully they go on to have their own children and raise them vegan and i do believe this is where the future is going well, you know, the, the statistics are on our side. I mean, um, you know, and people forget that the tipping point is not 51%. The tipping point in a culture is something something around 12%. So where if 12% of this generation, if this next generation is vegan, then we're there. I mean, we're not there as a vegan society, you know, and certainly with animal suffering and, and climate change, I mean, but we're, th we're mainstream is what I'm saying. And it's just, you know, I've, got, I've been doing this. How long have you guys been vegan? 18 months. 18 months for six yes. years. Well, I <laughs> love the topic because when I was 18 months vegan, I had the same kind of passion that you do. I mean, I still have it, but um, there's something really beautiful about being sort of newly vegan, isn't there, right? Yes. You just, you just have this fresh view of everything. You have this fresh excitement. But but what's fun to have been, you know, what's fun about be, having been vegan for 18 years is you see how far we've come. And, you know, you saw Vegucade, which was shot in 2005, and I'm sure you guys were laughing at the vegan products, right? Like those were like some big deal. And now we have these, you know, we have like amazing products now and they're just all over. And, and just imagine what there will be in 18 more years from now. You know? Actually, like, you were quite shocked. Yeah, when, when we watched Vegucated, I was like really shocked when you were going through the, uh, what would you call it? It's grocery stores and yeah. supermarkets. And you were going like, I think you were going through the, the vegan cheese aisle. And I just, I was like, wow, look at all those different, went mad. different types of cheese. We haven't oh, got really? that. <laughs> I think we've got about really? say about five brands that make. Oh, there's them. probably a few and, more and, than and that. Yeah, supermarket brands, but I was just like, whoa! And then they said New York had a, over a hundred restaurants. I was just like, we've got one. We're, we're living in the wrong country, yeah. <laughs> the wrong <laughs> city, <laughs> city. Because I know London, it's it's just people go and Brighton. You know those those cities. People are um, there are so many vegans and so many vegan shops there. So what town are you in again? Remind me. So we're in Worcester, which is in Worcester. What I can't even say it now. Worcestershire. Yeah, Worcestershire. I can't even say it. That's yeah. bad. Have you heard of Worcestershire sauce? Yes, yes. I have my vegan Worcestershire sauce. The not so vegan Worcestershire sauce. Yeah. Right. Well, we have a, a Annie's now Annie's makes a vegan one here. So you can you can get can you get vegan Worcestershire sauce there? Yes. Yeah, we, we get it. it's, it's called Henderson's Relish. Okay, good. And it's just as good. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> it's is, just yeah. as good. <laughs> that, you know, I am so impressed. Like, it's easy to be vegan in New York, but in a place like Worcester, you know, you guys are the pioneers. You're laying the foundation. You're creating the demand. You know, um, as Brian says in the film, he's like, you're the annoying vegans who are like demanding, you know, this or that here and there, and you're just going to pave the way for people coming. Around up. here, there's lots of farms. Yeah. We are like, farm so bill yeah. everywhere so it's it's for me i'm actually part of the vegan runners we, well, there's we like live. a running group Ooh, right and i think they're worldwide actually but i always run with my vegan runners top on wherever i run and i will purposely run past you know the the livestock markets when all the it's just over the road yeah it's not far away from us mm -hmm. and i'm just like this with my top on <laughs> I have. I, I wish I, I wish I wore it because I could show you. I have 
um, from veganbodybuilding.com like 15 years ago. I bought these little green shorts and they say vegan on the bum. <laughs> and when I used to go jogging, people would people would say, yeah, vegan. Or there was one guy, he said, excuse me, excuse me. I'm like, what, what? He said, oh, I just wanted to say my doctor just told me that I should be going vegan for my health because if I have, you know, high cholesterol or something like that. He said, Would you, do you have any advice? Now, and we, you know, it sparked a conversation, you know, and I love, I love wearing vegan paraphernalia and, you know, just, um, just having an in, a conversation starter. Oh, that's a good yeah, one. So here we go, 18 years, but you're oh, doing Oh, thank you. I love Defender of Animals. <laughs> yeah, and say, so have you seen his clothing range? I well, I am now. <laughs> I'm just about to. I'm going to proudly wear it now. He does uh, amazing tops. Yeah, amazing. So if you, I think it's defenderofanimalsclothing.com. Yeah, he's or got the UK a shop, and those are some of his tops. There. Yeah, you can see some of his tops. Yeah, I'm going to say if you're interested in sort of vegan Ooh, apparel, that I have. You check um, him out. Um, my half my family because my husband's uh english is in england so i may have to ask for that for for the holidays or something definitely and he does um he if you send a picture to him he'll put you on the website as well so our little Ooh. jack is actually on there in his t-shirt as well oh, and oh, as are we <laughs> oh, so they have little sizes for littles too they but... do indeed they oh do. wonderful yeah my children love to wear their vegan bling my son especially, he loves it. He loves to show it off. He loves talking about it. So um, he loves attention. He's just like me. He loves attention. Um, so he would, I'm sure he would love if I um, took a picture of him and he found it online. Yeah, definitely. Shall we do one more about the documentary Ooh, and then we'll we, move yes, on to okay. the, the book? So more I questions. Think we'll just go through some of the questions in the, in the comment section. Uh, do, 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 I've sent, I saw this one from Grumpy Vegan Grandad. Any plans of a future documentary? Oh, Grumpy Vegan Granddad. I started following you on Instagram because I saw another, I saw another, you know, I've seen seen um, some of you guys on YouTube and I love that he's he always tunes in. Um, and um, I wish my kids had a Grumpy Vegan Granddad. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, I have an idea for one. I want to do one about vegan youth, but... You know, in COVID, it's hard to really plan that far ahead. Um, so I think right now I'm, um, I used to work in children's publishing, actually. And it's always been my dream. I've had a few things on my bucket list. One was to live on the English countryside. So I may have to come and like stay with you guys for a year or something. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and another one was to write a, um, a vegan children's book. And I have a board book idea. I have a few ideas. So, um, so I want to do that. And then after that, you know, maybe the world will be a little bit easier to travel around. And it's also hard when you've got little bitties and I'm the primary caregiver for my children. Um, so I don't, I don't see myself doing another vegan documentary in the, you know, direct future, but maybe a little bit down the line, I would love to do one and cover kind of what we're talking about. And also, um, show, you know, show real vegan teens and vegan youth who are really making a difference in their communities. I think while you're actually on that subject, there is somebody in our community called Zactivist, and he's 13 years old. And he's recently appeared in the vegan review as well. And he is incredible. He he makes me so proud that I'm raising our son to be vegan. He is doing a lot of activism. He sets up a lot of his own um, activism as well. Wait, how old is he? How old did you say he was? 13. Amazing. It's fantastic. And what what's his impetus? Do you know what his story is? Um yeah, so I, I think he, I'm actually going to be doing a stream with him in Ooh. a couple of weeks. Oh, great. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be covering this with him. But mm -hmm. he was raised like yourself, wasn't he, Adam? Mm -hmm. So like, you know, the standard diet over here. And then he went vegetarian. And then he was watching documentaries by Joey Carbstrong. And mm -hmm. obviously, that's where he was led to his journey. But it's very sad, actually, because when I was watching about Zactivist, he appeared on Grumpy Vegan Grandad's channel. He was talking about bullying at school. Oh, and this was before what, you know anything happened to us. And it kind of, 
it just in life it just raised something inside me and I thought I can't have this and basically all that he has at lunch is a jacket potato and beans that's all they would offer him and he would have like various animal products thrown at him at school which does thrown worry him. him thrown at him thrown at him like this is what kids are doing to him like it doesn't bother him anyway I mean he's uh, a very strong character yeah, he's yeah. he's incredible but it's really sad and I do worry about the future for mm. our kids and what's in store it does that, it's upsetting that's really upsetting um he sounds like a wonderful kid and I mean I I'm grateful that he has that foundation, you know, and that sense of self-worth where that doesn't really bother him. Um, there's a girl who wrote the foreword. I don't know if you had a chance to read the foreword of our of our book, but that's written by an activist named Genesis Butler. She's also a teen. And she did her first TED Talk at age six, talking about being vegan, being a vegan six-year-old. And she comes from an activist family. Her great uh, uncle was Cesar Chavez, who's a labor, plant-based labor activist. Um, and she comes from an indigenous community. She comes from um, a Latinx community. Um, I think she's black too. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but she's um, been a wonderful, proud voice. And Marvel chose her to be a superhero. So they made a little like a comic about her and she got into People Magazine, but she's been doing this circuit to talk about climate change. So it's so heartening to see these kids. But now I feel like meanwhile, I saw a Facebook post by her mother saying that, um, that her mother was being attacked by some kind of psycho, um, you know, some psycho or something. It's just, it's disheartening, isn't it? But I, but I feel like, you know, it's just where we are in the movement. I feel like people are extra threatened by children. Um, just like in the same way that, I don't know if you've seen the vitriol against Greta Thunberg, but over here, the, oh, the yes. was out of control. I couldn't believe it. But she has the fortitude and thankfully she has the, um, it's sort of the neurology uh, to just set that aside and just not care. And just, yeah, and know know that she's doing the right thing, and be solid with that, because um, that that's what it's going to take. Because you know, our generation and the generations prior, we are just not getting excited about the things that we need to get excited around climate change, etc., to ensure a healthy planet for our children. It's just not happening. So we need them to light a fire under our butts, and they're going to take a lot of heat. They're going to take a lot of heat, but it's just part of where we are in this movement, just like the abolitionists took heat, just like the suffragettes were considered like totally bonkers. You know, um, it's just part of the social evolution. And, you know, fortunately and unfortunately, um, but I think the important thing is that you, um, I hope his activist has, a, I mean, it sounds like he's finding community. I think, you know, having a YouTube channel is a beautiful way to find community. I mean, you can, you know, read stupid comments, but, um, you know, what you guys are doing, you're creating community. So as long as we have this foundation and this community, then then really our kids will be strong, you know, and they can with withstand the storm with that yeah. foundation. I think as parents, you know, we, we're we going to see this happen, but we've got to be strong as well, haven't we? And when we're being strong, that carries on. And we're in this together. Yeah. Aren't we? That's right. Mm. Right, so, I think that brings us on to this amazing book that you've sent us. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad it arrived in time. I was worried that it wouldn't come in time for the for the live, but I'm glad that it did. This book, um, to the people who are watching, it gives all the information about the recommended daily allowances for children. And it's fantastic. <laughs> Uh, Thank you. Brilliant. We've made the um, what are they called uh, the thumbnail cookies. Oh, the, the thumbprint, thumbprint cookies. That's the one. Yeah, brilliant. So he had he had fun. I mean, he, he helped me do some of them, and then and then Adam got back from work, and it, he was gone then. But we've also made the sweet potato nuggets, the chickpea nuggets as well yes, today. Yes. And he's had those for tea. Oh, <laughs> nice. Oh, my gosh. You guys are ripping right through that. 
Yeah, definitely. It's brilliant. I love the planners as well. You've got like loads of like weekly planners for six yeah, months. Yes, yeah, that was Reed. Really, that was our nutritionist who was working hard on that. Um, yeah, so we've got, yeah, by age group. Also, one thing that I wanted um, to be sure to convey to parents is that that vegan dishes are so full of many wonderful nutrients. We, we kind of fixate on protein and iron and things. And, and it's, and so, what I had Reed do was calculate per serving how much of your daily allowance is in this or that dish. And you know, some of them are, are way cool. It's like, oh, you've got half of your protein in this one thing. But we focus so much on protein and zinc and iron that sometimes we forget like, um, you know, vitamin A is super important. And so she talks about vitamin A, she talks about vitamin C, she talks about vitamin E or, you know, copper or magnesium and all these things that yeah. that um, work together in your body, you know, to make it healthy on with whole plant foods. So, um, so yeah, so almost every recipe, not the recipes that are, you know, there are, com there are a couple of recipes that are, that are just really treats, but for um, for almost all the recipes, we made sure that Reed highlighted like, some special nutrients just to convey that you know the vegan diet is full of uh, full of wonderful nutrition i think that's the thing as well as vegan parents and you know obviously looking at the nutrition how many parents can we say that actually know exactly what they should be eating whereas we are looking at what we should be eating every day say selenium for example i know i can get that from a brazil nut, brazil nut exactly did you think never. about selenium ever did you ever think about no. i didn't know that before <laughs> right so no. we know what we should be eating and that's mm -hmm. what we're doing with our children, yet we're so up against, you know, being a child abuser and malnourishing well, our children. Well, I, we know what we're eating. Yeah. I know, and I think unfortunately what's happened is, um, you know, the news will capitalize on any story where a child is, um, really suffers from neglect. I mean, abuseful neglect, right? I mean, whenever there's a child who has, you know, had a neglectful parent, um, and they happen to, you know, feed them vegan. They're like, this vegan child is, you know, suffering because the parent is malnourished. It's like, no, that vegan child had no social security number. That child had never been to a doctor ever. That, you know, the neighbors never saw the child. That, you know, they never, you know, they were, it's just gross neglect. So for that to be connected to veganism is just tragic. And those aren't even studies. Those are, those are what you call case studies, right? That's like where one person, you know, one person somewhere had this horrible thing and everybody's in an uproar and blaming veganism when it's not the veganism, it's the parenting. Yeah. It's terrible, neglectful parenting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. What's that definitely. comment there? What's that? I've just seen by Vegan Taco. It's just uh, come up. Vegan taco. I have. Yeah, more <laughs> oh, how many yes. in, in less than a year of being vegan than I have had as my whole life as a meat eater? That's <laughs> true. Right? So true. So yeah. true. And you're held to task, aren't you? Because people will ask you all the time. And so you need to know your stuff. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you, you need, need to, to know where you got it. <laughs> say, okay, did you, do you eat? Well, in the US, it's PBJs, right? Uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Okay, well, that's you know a toddler's entire um, recommended daily allowance for uh, protein, right there. You know, yeah. so it's you know you have you have to arm yourself, unfortunately, with this information. But I feel like the more mainstream it gets, um, you know, the more parents are doing these YouTube channels, the more kids are raising vegan. It's just um, it's all going to change. And with a book like that, yes, you're I'm making just, it just... easier for everybody else as well. I hope so. That was the hope, yeah, because there wasn't anything, you know, when I was pregnant. I was just looking on blogs and, you know, chatting with friends and just trying to grab what I could from anywhere. Um, so, so, yeah, it was one of those moments where I was like, you know, like with the films, like someone should really do this you know someone should really make a book that's like this and then i was like oh well i guess i could do that you know maybe you had that same experience when you were like someone should really do a vegan youtube channel that was with parenting and this and that and then you're like oh maybe i could do that yeah, i didn't want to at first you know, it was your idea yeah it was my idea because <laughs> i thought in because we were doing everything on instagram and i thought i think we you can't connect to it, the audience as well as you yeah. can through yeah. YouTube and videos. And I thought well, that would be a better way to go because they can actually hear us and hear our story properly and connect better. But yeah, it's just evolved. 
Yeah, oh, it's it's nice. Well, they say also, um, I remember Ingrid Newkirk, who founded PETA, um, said, I mean, she's, I'm sure she's quoting somebody else. I'm sure this isn't her quote, but I remember her saying, you know, if a picture, you know, is worth a thousand words, video is worth a million, you know, there's just nothing like, I mean, in person is obviously the best, but there's really nothing like just the moving image and to really get a sense of who someone is and their story and their energy, you know, we're not wackadoodle. We're not malicious. We're just, you know, we're just doing our thing, trying to do the best we can, right? Definitely. Definitely, yeah, definitely. So what, obviously we're talking about the book. I want to know how these recipes came about. How did this book come about? Like what was involved? Sure. So, um, so I had this idea when Gabriel was about two, and he had, I put him in a little separation class and that was kind of horrible and I wish I never had, but that did give me like an hour, a chunk of, you know, an hour a day where I could like be me, <laughs> have a creative thought, you know. Wow, yes, <laughs> love that. <laughs> so he was probably crying in the separation class and I forever regret that, but I do, but I also do, um, you know, am grateful that I was like, oh, you know, maybe I can, Maybe I can write this book. So I started working on the proposal. I had the idea of um, bringing different families on board, just because no two family, no two vegan families eat the same way. You know, we don't. We, you know, we eat a lot of the same products, but you know, different people have different palates, different cultures, right? So different parts of the world, different parts of the country. So I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if we had sort of uh, vegan parents sending their best of, and then we contribute our best of, and you know, put it in a book. And then right before um, my daughter was born, um, I hired Laura Delhauer, who's my co-author, to um, to write it with me. She she originally I was like, oh well, I really need a mother's helper, you know, because my husband travels all the time, and I'll have a newborn, I'll have to like make dinner, and witching hour is the worst, isn't it? Like oh, I see yeah. them, they're just like crying, and they're just oh, and then you've got a toddler, <laughs> and it's just oh, it's the worst, and. Um, I don't know what that's like to have a toddler crying and a baby crying yes. at the same time. Ooh, ooh, that was real hard. But um, so my husband, he, you know, I'm from I'm from farm country like you. I mean, where I'm from, there's one vegan restaurant that opened up this year, and I was surrounded by factory farms and um, and um, and I, I never really grew up with much help in the house. But my husband's from London, and he was like. Oh yeah, so we should just hire someone. And I was like, hire someone, you know? <laughs> what a crazy idea. Um, and then I'm so glad we did. Laura, you know, Laura was amazing. And she, uh, you know, the baby wants mommy, you know, you smell like milk, they know you. So the baby wanted me and I couldn't cook. And I was like, Laura, can you cook? So she cooked and she used to teach cooking classes and out of her apartment and various places. And she was vegan. And she just was a really good cook. And she was a nanny at the time for other, or she had been a nanny for other families and got them, these standard American diet kids, she got them to eat more plants. And I was like, how perfect. So I asked her to come on board and those thumbprint cookies are hers. Um, so many of the recipes in the book are hers. She got me, I know you're, you're, you know, you got into this through health. She got into it through health. And she taught me, um, and I knew like, yeah, you know, unrefined, grains and you know you don't want refined sugar I kind of knew that but she really showed me how to do it and it was really important to her so that's why the book um, one main main reason why the book is just so you know focused on healthy foods we have our treats of course but we also have healthy treats too and we want them to be easy like those thumbprint cookies you know they're pretty easy and they're how many there they are there they are <laughs> Laura, look, Laura there are your cookies all the way in the UK <laughs> And uh, yeah, and she made, you know, she made chia jam. And so she she made all this wholesome, easy stuff that kids love and that, you know, that feels really fun, you know, for breakfast. Um, so really, Laura was the missing link that got um, got the ball rolling. And then we got an agent um, right away. Every agent we approached was like, wait, there's not a book like this yet. And we were like, no. So we picked Linda Lowenthal and she was marvelous. And she connected us with 10 Speed. Um, who came on? Who came on board? Oh, I'm so oh. glad that that book is available. It's it's, it's what we need now. It's well, it's, I'm, it is. I'm glad it's available in the UK. And then a friend in Italy was like, "Oh, you know, where can I get it?" And I just, I mean, I don't love to support Amazon, but um, 
But I was like, well, it's on Amazon in Italy and it's in Australia and all these, you know, places. And I'm just really glad that it's available in the UK. Yeah, definitely. I think this we we should be doing a lot of recipes out of here. The stuffing. I mean, Jack loves baking with me. He loves helping in the kitchen. Beautiful. And he mashed the chickpeas today for the nuggets. Like he was doing it himself. <laughs> and he's very involved and it keeps him busy. Gives me chance to like, you know, look at my phone or something while he's yes. doing it. So, oh, anything to keep them busy, right? Anything yes. At all. And it's teaching them about healthy eating and what they should be eating. You right. Know, and that's, that's, and, you know, there's science that shows that kids who are involved in the kitchen will try more things they will be their palates will be more open so that's wonderful that you're doing that so what is your favorite family meal or meal out of that book what is it that your children you know what do they like to eat so there's a uh, something that's named after gabriel and it's gabriel's green sauce his favorite thing in the whole world is a pesto that's made, not just basil he loves basil especially from grandpa's garden but this has basil and cilantro and um, almonds. It's an almond base. And of course, nutritional yeast. Um, yes. I mean, so many of our recipes have, have nutritional yeast just because kids love it. It's got that B12 that they need. Um, they just they just love it. They gobble it up. So that's his favorite. We eat that, I'm going to say, maybe every 10 days <laughs> like that. I mean, we really put that in rotation a lot. Um, my daughter has a sweet tooth. Um, so like me, so we, yeah, we do a lot of the, a lot of the baking in there. Like she loves, the she loves those breakfast cookies, um, for breakfast and, um, she loves to bake with me and I like to do cake decorating on the side, um, and pie decorating. And so she gets involved and, um, sometimes I give them a little bitty four inch cake, you know, or a little, like one layer of a six inch and they decorate it. Um, but we've got, uh, yeah, we've got one cake in there that is just sweetened with dates i think maybe a tiny bit of coconut sugar um but for them that's cake you know that's like it doesn't have to be junk for them if it looks like cake and it tastes yeah. good and it's sweet you know that's cake and they get excited yeah that fools me i i tend to make a lot of my cakes without oil or sugar so i'll go for the dates or the coconut sugar right. exactly um, and it fools me so it fools yeah. them yeah exactly and and if they grow up with you know just that palette of not needing super sweetness, that's a gift. Yeah. I mean, he knows what cake is and he asks for cake regularly. Yeah. So if he's going to have it, it's going to be something yeah. healthy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Now, for birthday parties, I do. Um, I was going to ask you this. Yeah, we have. Well, we're so lucky. I mean, um, you know, you're, you know, the activist with his little jacket potato just breaks my heart because. Our school, um, where the kids go, it's a private school, but um, once they're in the third grade and they go to the big Calhoun, it's a bigger building, they have um, a vegan entree every day and clearly labeled vegan sides. And we're spoiled because right down the street, we have Peace Food Cafe. So before every birthday party in school or before every birthday party that we go to, um, we, we run to the corner and they pick out their cupcake. Um, and sometimes, if I, or sometimes if I'm just making a batch of cupcakes, I'll, um, you know, ask them what color they want, what sprinkles, like custom, it, customize it to them and what they really like so that they feel special. And then I'll bring that um, to the school and I'll leave it in a freezer. So in our class, they actually have, um, they have a freezer in the classroom and, you know, and there are so many birthdays, I feel like all the, all the time. So they just pull one out um, from there and just give them their cupcake. That's a really good idea because I've noticed, um, I mean, the nursery that Jack goes to, we've given them a lot of support and they do provide a good menu for him. Nice. But there's, there's those times where it might be a child's birthday and, you know, a parent might bring cake in and I've not really sort of thought about this. And I did think recently, well, maybe I could, you know, take some cakes in and get them to freeze it so that right. if they are having cake, there's something there for him. That's right. I mean, I know that some allergy kids, because they're, you know, kids have allergies now, right? Yeah, they do. Whatever we do, whatever we're doing to the planet, they have allergies. And um, and so there, we're, there's always some kid in class with an allergy, I feel like, um, who has their own treat as well. So it's not so it's not so weird to have your own treat these days. And, um, and just having that little extra thing. And also just having an open dialogue with a the teacher. They always tell me when something's coming up. 
you know, and they say, oh, just so you know, so-and-so's having a birthday and just have that open line of communication um, so that you're, you know, you're not in a position where your child feels, you know, left out. No, what's... So honestly, that sounds amazing. Um, Marissa, would you say in the USA, veganism doesn't have a stigma around it like it does in the UK? Would you I say it does? It, I think it depends where you are, right? I think it depends where you are. Um, in California, no. In New York City, no. In Portland, Oregon, certainly not. Um, in Asheville, North Carolina, no. You know, there are a lot of places where, um, you know, where progressive people tend to cluster. And in progressive communities, there's there's not much of a stigma attached. But where I'm from, you know, people still don't, I mean, it's so much better than it was, but people still have, you know, ideas around it not being as good, right? So if you say, oh, here I brought vegan cupcakes, they're like, thanks, you know, and maybe they won't try it. Whereas people who know how good vegan desserts are, they're like, oh, give me that, you know, that's <laughs> good and it's not garbage, you know. So, um, so I think it really depends where you are. But it's interesting because I've, I've noticed in the UK, you guys have such a tradition of vegetarianism, right? You've had um, vegan cakes are just fine. Um, yeah, there's such a tradition of strong tradition of vegan uh, vegetarianism in the UK, and obviously veganism was born, you know, with Donald Watson in the UK. But um, but I can see, I can see where you know, even my husband, he's not 100% vegan all the time. He's way better, um, but like. If he's in a pub in England and they have sticky toffee pudding, you know, and it's not vegan, he's like, ah. <laughs> it's so easy to do, though. Yeah, really. we do. And I have. And I have. But why doesn't this pub in, you know, Cornwall, you know, have this? So, um, yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Why do you think it is in the UK, the stigma of veganism? You guys would know better than, than, than I would. I just think it's... It just seems it's so very, behind. That's, and that it's just... It's like when you go to the supermarket, I think like we've farming. got Tesco's. Tesco's has got quite a good variety. And even Aldi and... I mean, Aldi is... is you go in Aldi mm. and there's vegan, vegan, vegan everywhere. Like, there's yeah, loads of stuff. It's, it's coming through. And a lot more things are labelled vegan now, whereas, you know, before, it's just labelled vegetarian. Right. And, and you have to go through it You have to go through it. Sure, sure. But there's... there's it's really, it's really difficult because we've, like we said, we've got so much farmland around us. Yeah. But I know they're out there. They are out there. But <laughs> we actually have. Oh, activists he's in, in the, the house. Oh, activist. So he's nice to house. meet you. <laughs> oh my gosh, what an honor to have a have a vegan like a like a self proclaimed, you know, activist here. That's wonderful. I feel like it's easy. It's kind of easy to be born into a vegan family, you know, because kind of the work has been done for you in many ways. But to come to it on your own, that's really special. That's really and, and to take that active, you know, and to take it to activism and, and get involved. That's like extra super special. That's just amazing. Yeah, it is. It is. He's, he's super inspiring, isn't he? Mm. Uh, but going back to the previous, I just think that farming is such a like a backbone of britain at the moment yeah it, there is that it's back, like there's yeah. so many traditions Support and there's like sun, sunday lunches and you know the the full english breakfast and you know you fish and chips it, it just yeah just the lists are endless when it comes sure, to the sure. same you know i had a bit of that too you know i thought well i'm german american that's my heritage you know i like my wurst I like, you know, all of my, I like my Käsespätzle and all these specialties that I grew, you know, I spent my summers there in Germany with my Omi. And and it felt like if I abandoned that, then I was sort of abandoning that tradition, you know, and that part of my family. And that felt scary. That felt a little bit scary to me. Oh, typically with, we like meat. Meat is an English tradition. Steak. Yeah. Same in the US. It's exactly the same. It's steak and burgers, right? We're the land of hamburgers. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Vegans yeah. today, we're right. Yeah. yeah. Because change is scary, right? And so rather than have that cognitive dissonance where you feel like you should change, but you don't really want to, they would rather just say, well, you know, I'm just, I'm not really going to do it. You guys are crazy. You know, and they just la 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 and just close their ears. <laughs> yeah. So we we've been doing this eighteen months, and 
it's been about normalizing the vegan children, normalizing vegan families. And we hadn't really done any, well, we hadn't done any activism, had we? Um, and a few weeks ago, we went to our first vigil. And that was, that was really difficult. That was, that was hard. That was hard. Tell me, tell me about it. How was it hard? <sighs> seeing those, we did a chicken one. And it was seeing those chickens and knowing, I mean, you can see, you can see these chickens. They are, you know, they are someone. And I stroked a few of them, you know, and you have a few minutes with them before they go. And this particular slaughterhouse slaughters 4.5 million a week. Mm -hmm. And what it did is it, made me realize just how much people eat chicken in the UK. And this is just one slaughterhouse of so many. But the hardest part was on your shoulders, you know what's going to happen to those chickens. Mm. And those chickens don't know what's coming. And they don't, they probably do know what's coming, but know. that's the only time they see light. And seeing this visual, we then went on to watch Dominion, I think it was last week. Mm -hmm. And it's, I've always been about the animals, but now I'm like the animals, the animals, the animals, that, that, yeah, it's, it's been a massive wake up call. That's, that's beautiful that, and it's so hard that you had that experience, that time knowing what was coming down the line. That's, that's so hard. That's so hard. I hope you have some, um, a farm animal sanctuary nearby because yes. when I was um, working on Veducated, I, I, parked myself in, I went to Farm Sanctuary and they have this tiny like closet room with just shelves and shelves and shelves of undercover footage. And I went through all of it, right? Because I wanted the most compelling footage and it almost broke me. And, but what saved me during that experience was being able to go out on the farm and hug a sheep, you know, give a pig a belly rub, um, and I got to hold a rooster. They love it, you know, when you um, when you massage <laughs> the comb. The, the comb, <laughs> um, and they just one fell asleep in my arms while I was massaging, oh. um, you know, his comb. It was just, it was so lovely, and and I feel like we need that. We need to practice that self care. We need to fill our cups. It's important to see the tricky stuff, the hard stuff, just so that we can bear witness. But it's also just as important um, to surround yourself with the good stuff. So have you been, have you taken? So we, we have three farm sanctuaries around here. And the one in particular was the first farm sanctuary in the United Kingdom. So it was the first one. Oh, wow. I don't know how long it's been here, but it's something that we did a lot with Jack before we yeah. started getting active. And yeah. I think it's important for children to interact like this with these animals um, because they, they get to see them in a different way. Jack knows the difference between a farm and a farm sanctuary. So it's, you know, he, I think that's really important <laughs> and it's breaking yeah. that, that stigma that farm animals are happy, which is what he learns in nursery. He learns that they're happy animals but yes. Jack knows they're not mm. and I think farm sanctuaries are just so important and actually to go to farm sanctuaries mm. when you've seen this footage it how well it helps me it does it, it does help it does it refills your cup it's, yeah. it's important it's important I actually when I got into this movement the well in 2002 2003 2004 I so I tend to hyper-focus. Um, I've been diagnosed with ADHD, which as an adult, and I didn't know I had this as a child, but if I'm really into something, I will hyper-focus on it. And to a not necessarily healthy degree. <laughs> so I was reading everything about farm animals. I read all the books. I watched all the documentaries. And there was a time where I felt like, you know what, if I weren't alive on this planet, maybe that wouldn't be so bad. You know, I thought this is this planet is pretty horrible. People it are pretty is. horrible. 
And, you know, if I were to go away, you know, maybe that wouldn't be terrible. And I started to have some weird, like, intrusive visualizations, like violent images that would just come into my brain. And it was sometimes around in myself and violent, you know, because I'd watched all this footage, like, what if I was on a line, you know, and just things like that. And it, it, and it's people forget that when you watch this stuff, like witnessing the death or killing of an animal is considered a traumatic event, okay? And when you expose yourself to this information and this knowledge and this footage over and over again, you can be a little bit traumatized. Um, and we often overlook it. And, and so number one, having the knowledge. Two, finding the care. So I did go to therapy. Um, and she practiced um, EMDR on me, which is a, it's, in, it's fascinating. It's so interesting. You like recount your trauma. I also had just done, um, I had done rescue for after Hurricane Katrina, I had pulled dogs and cats out of flooded homes. And so that was really tough. Um, and so you recount your trauma and then she like has you like, she has sounds and you look this way or that way. And somehow in recounting the trauma and telling your story, Again, it takes away the real pain of it. And if we are able to turn this narrative of pain and suffering into something meaningful, like through activism, through YouTube, through books, through filmmaking, through whatever activism, starting a farm animal sanctuary, we're able to heal ourselves and we're able to help heal the planet. Do you so, know what helps me with this? Tell me. I mean, that I'm raising a vegan family and that I'm teaching yeah. him, you know, with age appropriately at the moment. Sure, sure, sure. But that helps knowing that, you know, he's 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 learning yeah. and respecting yeah. animals and learning that compassion. And that helps that, and that you see helps. it, right? I mean you, you see a you see a non vegan child operating the world, whether it's a spider that they can come across or whatever a dog or something and there's i mean not all vegan children are the same i'm not i can't say that i can't say that i don't know i don't know them all <laughs> but, um but just from my experience if you have a vegan child and just how they see the world it's so different than how a non-vegan child sees themselves and their place in the world right yeah definitely tell marissa about the chickens oh yes yeah. so we went to my sister, she was in the chat earlier, um, but she rescued some battery farm chickens from slaughter. They were gonna go to slaughter and they were really like fragile. I need to know, how did she get into all of this? Uh, well, we were raised vegetarian. So we've, we've okay. we all, you know, she wanted to rescue these chickens and I've been badgering her as well about, you sure. know, to things but yeah, yeah she, she took these chickens on and she spends so much time with these hens that they've grown to love her and they follow her around everywhere and she goes in there she threw something and these chickens were playing football they were literally running after the they are so funny to watch chickens so they're, funny. they're beautiful and they actually are altruistic I'm sure you've read about that too there was, there was, um, oh, I listened to the Rich Roll podcast with Leah Garces. She's the president of Mercy for Animals and she's a vegan mom. And um, yeah, I, it's a beautiful interview and she's a real chicken lady. And she uh, recounts a study, I think it was in England maybe. I love how the English love to study animals. Um, and there was a study where these chicks were, it's somehow subjected to like puffs of air or something. And they were just like, try to get away from it. And then um, if you even showed the mother hen, so she watched this. If you even showed the mother hen the device that puffed the air, she would get frantic and upset. So she cared, you know, they care about their own. They've done amazing, you know, rescues. They've, they've, um, you know, chickens have saved their babies, tried to save babies from hawks. Um, they've saved their babies from burning buildings. I mean, they just, they really have that connection. Yeah, I do. Tell Marissa the old, ah, okay, yes. Yeah. So old Matt, old Matt Donald, we all know who old Matt Donald is. Yeah. Well, I've taught him that he's not a nice man. <laughs> so he goes to nursery and says, old Matt Donald isn't a nice man. Um, 
And I've told him that you know, there's an old MacDonald at the farm sanctuary. So he'll say, yeah. old MacDonald at the farm sanctuary. We so do that too. We change, we change words and stories all the time. So we do, this little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roasted beets. This ah. little piggy had none. You know, so we, we change the words too. Yeah, I think I say this little piggy went to Tesco's. That's oh, what I yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he had ice cream yeah. instead. <laughs> yeah, there's a German lullaby that I sing to my children. And in the end, they say at the, it's horrible. Um, at the end, there's, it's like, and we all had roast goose. You know, that's how it ends. Gänse braten, and I change it to tofu braten. <laughs> so I, you know, take the species as I'm out of it. So what do your children think about, you know, what what have you told them? What do they know? Because Jack, like I said, he's almost three. Mm -hmm. He started asking questions because I've been telling him age appropriately. He knows that cow's milk is for baby cows mm -hmm. and he knows that some people eat cows and he finds that very upsetting. Mm -hmm. So how do your children handle that? Because obviously you've got you know, an older child. Yeah, I do. Um, but he's a very sensitive older child. So every child is going to be different. Um, he is like, he is super ultra, super duper sensitive um, to any suffering. If his sister's crying, he gets so upset. Um, if he, there's a part in the movie where it looks like someone's in peril, you know, he'll just run away. He's just a real sense of sweet kid. So I just got an email or no, a Facebook post yesterday, I think, from someone saying, oh, my, I showed my eight-year-old your documentary and he loved it. And I couldn't show my documentary to my almost eight-year-old because he just, I don't think he could, he's not ready for that. Um, every kid is different, right? Yeah. Um, so I've told him, you know, as sort of on an as, as needed basis, um, to explain things and he's still surprised when I tell him a little bit more a little bit more um, and my daughter but when they go into the store they get upset you know and they go into the meat counter right they go to the meat counter and they say because they don't it's not meat to them right it's not meat to me that's not meat to you those are animals um, and sometimes people come up to us and be like oh do you know where do you know where I can get this you know this or that you know hunk of flesh. And I'm like, Oh, I'm sorry. I don't eat animals. I don't say I don't eat meat. I say, Oh, I'm sorry. I don't eat animals. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so they don't see it. They don't see it. And they also see the, see the eggs and they're like, mommy, those are chicken's eggs. <laughs> um, and it speaks to kind of the bubble that I raised them in. Uh, we, I have a lot of vegan friends. They're not all in the neighborhood. I have a like, one in the neighborhood, but I make a point of spending as much time with our vegan family friends as we can so that they can have the community. But it does mean that they're in a little bit of a bubble so that when they go to the store, they're kind of floored um, yeah. by how much, you know, other people eat this stuff. Um, so yeah, so I, what do they know? They know animals are killed. Um, they know about they do, they know about climate change. I don't go I don't go into it you know hardcore with like the starvation that's going to happen, the wars that will happen, the forest fires, just uh, just how uninhabitable this planet will be um, in their children's lifetime. Like I, I don't go into that because I don't want to traumatize them. But like they know that. Um, so my in laws have a condo in Queen, and we like to go there, and they know I prepare them like well this probably won't always be be here you know so so they know the reality but i just don't go that deep into it um and as they ask more questions i will answer them yeah that's what we've always said will be yeah. transparent there is my sister everybody she's yeah. in the house the one i own her. the chickens yeah she's my baby sister who rescued the chickens i love that i love that you guys have this little this twosome now <laughs> so chicken rescuing twosome. That's wonderful that you have that. And I'm just curious, why did your parents raise you vegetarian? So I'm so glad. Um, my mom was about six. And I was, I was actually talking to her about this recently. I asked her. And she asked questions. And she made the connection of six. And back then, it was very different. My mom was, like, forced to eat it. And my mom used to, like, put it and try and give it to the dog. And try and do what she could to not eat it she wouldn't eat it 
Wow. And my mom has been through hell trying to raise us as vegetarian. Yeah. And she's a big support in this because she knows what I'm up against. And your dad was on board too? Yeah, it, it's, it, it's, I'm, I'm really thankful that they did that. That's wonderful. And my mom, um, when we were growing up as teenagers, my mom was a vegan. Oh, okay. Um, I had a very different perspective on it because I didn't understand. And my one sister went vegan when she was a, um, she was about a teenager and I just didn't understand. I didn't understand what veganism was. I was the older one. Um, but my mom has recently gone plant-based again and you know she's learning things from me and she's making lots of recipes again and she says it's easier now because there's so much available. Yeah. But I, I, the information wasn't readily available back then. I, she thought the mm -hmm. vegetarianism was enough. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But I think you're right. So think you're right. People thought vegetarianism was enough. They really did. Yeah. You know, they think, well, the cows aren't going to be killed and, the, you know, for their milk and the chickens aren't going to be killed for their eggs. But they didn't think about what happens when the cows are, you know, spent or the chickens are spent. They don't. And, and you know, we had we didn't have social media. We didn't have other ways like sort of democratized ways. I mean, one of the beautiful things of the Internet is that information's out there. One of the bad things is there's a lot of terrible information that's just not true. Yes. And then of course there's the bullying, you know, so, yeah. so there's that, but we do, you know, there are ways of getting, getting the word out there. Um, and now we have that, you know, kids, kids today, they're going to find out this information. Um, and they're going to ask us, you know, I, I said this on the, our hen house podcast, when the fit hits the shan with climate change, um, they're going to look back at us and say, what did you do? Yeah, I know. What did you do? What did you what did you not do? Why didn't you do this? If you knew that that meat and dairy played such a role, why why didn't we do something about it? Mm -hmm. And you know, just we're always we're always uh, creating a, a larger circle of compassion and it's including more and more beings. And we know from the arc of history that animal rights is the next thing. Like we just know that. And so if we're on board and we're teaching our kids, I'm really into family history and genealogy. And to look back, it helps you look forward, right? If I'm looking back at my slave owning ancestors and my, you know, my Nazi grandfather and all these people who were just really, you know, they were products of their time. Do you want to be just a product of your time? Or do you want to be someone who's ahead of the game and sees where it's going, yeah. who knows, who has, who says, hey, why can't we include this trans person in our circle of compassion? Why can't we include this chicken in our circle of compassion? You know, our, our, you know, our children and their children are gonna look back and they're gonna say, what did you do? No, what I'm you do? fully agree with that. Yeah, I'm with definitely. that, definitely with that. So Helen Hawley says, do you think the upcoming David Attenborough documentary on plant-based, going, on going plant-based will hit home with the masses? And will people Everyone relate to veganism? Everybody is. My son knows everything about every animal you know, because of Sir Attenborough. <laughs> and he, can, he says, it's, he says, well, David Attenborough says, you know, and he quotes whatever it is about some weird animal I've never heard of. Um, so I think, I don't know. I want to hear more about this, um, Helen and, and Daniela. I, I want to hear more about it because I don't know about it, but I just know that he's such a voice and he's been knighted and, and I, it sounds amazing. Please do tell me more. I do. I think we need to watch this it's, one, don't we? Yeah, so I, I, think I, I, I have it. heard something about a cake coming up, but yeah, yeah well, I we think need we need to, to see look where into this it goes. More. He's a national treasure. You just yeah. got to pay for that, bro. So, is there any more questions uh, out I, there? I got a question. Oh, you've got a question. So, there's a big, massive tradition in America coming up. How would you get around Halloween? Right. So, <laughs> Good so my son's birthday is right after Halloween and he sort of, he loves it. He always is some kind of animal. Um, he's always, you know, he's been a cat and he's been, he's, he just, he was, do you have wild crats in the UK? Uh... It's, it's a, well, it's a PBS show. Anyway, it's, 
it's these uh, people can do have cre so these guys they get creature power discs and they take on the like special powers of the animal and my children love that too. Um, so he's been that. So anyway, they really love um, they love the holidays so much. So what we do and Halloween is a big deal. I know it's newer more, newer in the UK. Um, <laughs> what's that? I love Halloween. Oh, you do love Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> you grow up celebrating and trick or treating and all of that. Uh, no, not really. Because okay. um, I did. Yeah, you did. Oh, you did. Okay. <laughs> You know, yeah, I, I loved Halloween. My kids love it. They they just can't stop. Like, they're already talking about it. Um, so what we do is, you know, obviously we get vegan candy. And we um, have a front stoop here in Manhattan, on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. So we sit and we have our little basket that we give out. And then we go trick-or-treating. And um, my kids are so funny uh, because they always ask if something's vegan. And, I mean, to a degree where I'm like, <laughs> like, can we just like do this? But they're like, um, which candy is vegan? But it's beautiful because they're actually educating the people, right? They're like, oh, do you? And they, the people are like, oh, I don't know if I have a, you know, and they're thinking about, oh, well, what? And so suddenly they're learning about what's vegan and what's not. Um, and then so I point out, well, that is, and that is, and that is. So if there's something that's vegan, they will take it. Um, if there's not, they'll take, they'll take it and they'll throw it in their little bag. And then we come home and when we're out of our candy, we'll just throw it in there and leave it on the, leave it on the stoop and whoever wants it can take it. We just leave it right in a, in a, you know, in the basket on the stoop, or we give it to our, um, our nanny. We have a wonderful nanny and she, she loves to snack on that stuff and she's got a little boy at home, so she'll take it too. Um, so we just kind of, you know, recycle it, I guess. Yeah, that's really good to hear your perspective. What you, what, what's your plan? What do you think you're going to do? I don't know yet because, like, last year he was only two. Yeah, so, we so we yeah. didn't right. really do sweets. We just walked around and just mingled in with all the ghosts and the ghouls. And yeah, so we, we might try and encourage people to come here and <laughs> do idea. treats here, maybe. Yes. Well, so there's... um a podcaster named Amy Bradley. She's got um, the pink drink in the book. She's a friend of mine. She has a podcast called Vegan Fam in Cowtown. And um, they have a beautiful tradition in Columbus, Ohio, where they do truck or treat or trunk or treat. So what they do is all the vegan families pick a day and they go to, is it some, they pick a parking lot usually, I believe. Um, and they just, they open the trunk of their car or truck or SUV, you know, in the, in the U.S., a lot of big cars, a lot of big cars, and they decorate it. And they go to town. I think she, I think she dresses hers up as a she dresses her up her her truck up as a shark one year, and so they have all vegan stuff. So um, they also make it allergy allergy friendly. So if there are kids also who maybe have a peanut allergy and you know can't do the regular, don't maybe their parents don't want them to do the regular trick or treating. If they have like a really severe allergy, they'll do that. Um, so it's a really beautiful community event. And if we had a parking lot, you know, um, we would totally do that. But uh, but being that we don't, and my vegan people are spread out all over, what we will do sometimes is we'll just go we'll we'll go trick or treating with another vegan family, so that the kids feel like, oh, I've got my vegan friend here, I've got my vegan friends. And like that gives them like a buffer, you know, like they feel confident, they feel okay. They're all eating, you know, eating the good stuff. And, and so that makes it more fun. I like that idea as well, actually. Yeah, that's, that's a good call. Yeah, really cool. now, do you have vegan, other vegan friends in your neighborhood? So there's quite a few around us, Great. Um, which, which I thought there would be more, but you know, there, there is quite a few around here. Um, and we do see them. Well, we don't at the moment because of obviously the, the sure. whole COVID thing. Yeah. But the idea is that, you know, we have picnics and we do more and we visit farm sanctuaries together and we do more stuff oh. because I think that's what we need as well as the children. Yeah. Absolutely. You it's very important. important. Yeah, need it, don't we? We do, we do. So I think we'll start sort of wrapping up a little bit. It's only been an hour and a half. <laughs> it's only been an hour and a half. And I, 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 think I, I could talk for hours, you know. It's just so I mean. fun to connect with other vegan families. So I think, is there anything else you want to ask? Uh, 
Tofu or tempeh? Tofu. Tofu. Uh, and what do you do with it? What do you do with your tofu? <laughs> so um, I'm a scram, an old fashioned scramble girl. Um, but I really love, there's a recipe in the book for tofu dill bites um, that my friend Jessica Shoke made. She contributed. And I just love dill. So what she does is they cut it up in cubes. You press it and then you cut it up in cubes. And then you put all these seasonings in a bag or like a little, you know, um, little Tupperware pot or whatever, little, you know, whatever container. And then you shake it. And so you get the nooch on there, you get the dill on there, you get all the good stuff, and then you can bake it or you can fry it. Um, they're delicious. My kids are it drives me crazy because they're not big tofu fans. My daughter likes like a fried, a southern fried tofu, and she likes a, a good scramble, so we'll do scrambles. But um, but I really love the tofu dilly bites. Do your children like peanut butter? They love peanut butter. We're so American. They love peanut butter. Do, does does Jack like peanut butter? Uh, yes, and peanut butter tofu is a thing. Ooh, tell me about. We do. We have you know sesame peanut sesame tofu sticks with a peanut sauce. But I want to hear about peanut butter tofu. So it's like really sticky and it's baked. We put it in the active fry over here, but I put like a bit of arrowroot powder on and I cook it with that on. And then I make a sticky sauce with maple syrup, peanut butter, a bit of soy sauce, I think. Like a um, oh my God, that sounds like our peanutty sauce. Yeah, similar. Yes. similar. And but I you coat it. it or, you, or you coat it directly. Yeah, and it's amazing. Okay. We haven't done that. We've done the dipping, but we haven't coated it directly. Maybe we have to. Very nice. It. Hey, if I have a follow-up book to this, <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to you. <laughs> I keep being asked, actually, to do an e-book, and I'm thinking in the future that might be where, where I go because I do have some – Nice recipes up my sleeve that I like to use. Well, so, you know, maybe not just an ebook, right? I mean, maybe you can, because it's just growing. Veganism is growing and growing. So maybe if they see, you know, the writing on the wall and publishers get excited, then maybe you can pitch them something. Definitely. Yeah. So, is there anything that, if, is there, any, to sort of finish this and looking at like a family perspective? obviously with everything that we've talked about with the bullying or anything like that. Is there anything that, what would you say to a family if they came to you, you know, when they wanted to go down vegan, what's the best advice you would give somebody? I would say that um, people focus too much on what children, you know, can't have as vegans. You know, I don't like the word. I don't like saying can't. We can. We can. I can have whatever I want, right? Yes. I, we choose not to, right? But um, people focus too much on what you can't have, and they don't focus enough on what you can have. I mean, first of all, children. My children are eating things that I never ate, right? I did. They weren't even on my radar. Uh, you know, seaweed snacks. My daughter was just just chowing down on seaweed snacks. I didn't, and those are full of minerals, right? Yes. Um, what else? Goji berries, they would scarf down as children. Um, obviously the quinoa, which I didn't have growing up, you know, I didn't have the tofu or the tempeh. I barely knew what a lentil was, you know. <laughs> they, um, oh, thank you, I'm easy vegan. Um, yeah, so people focus too much on what you can't have instead of focusing on all the wonderful foods that you're exposing your children to that will become family favorites that will become their comfort foods when they're having a bad day and they want to come home you know instead of you know ripping op open something you know packaged garbage here it's in the U in the US it's it's always macaroni and cheese tends to be um, they're going to make you know mom's mac -a lantern and cheese you know with with pumpkin sauce and you know pumpkin base instead. So they're so you're giving them healthy comfort foods. You're setting their palate up, but also most importantly, um, kids love to think of themselves as superheroes, and that's one reason why I love Vivi the Super Vegan. Is um, kids absolutely want to save animals? They want to be strong. They want to be healthy. They want to think of themselves as a good person in the world. All of their cartoons, all of the movies in Hollywood, everything they consume is all about 
doing good in the world, about saving animals, saving the planet, saving other people. And this gives them a way to do that every day. So they walk around, they don't suffer. They don't walk around suffering and feeling sorry for them. So, oh, I can't have this, I can't. No, they are walking around feeling, oh my gosh, I'm a vegan kid. I'm special. I'm helping the world every day. I am so proud and so lucky. I do talk to my, you know, you check in with, you check in with your kids every once in a while. You know, and you say, hey, are you happy? Do you like vegan, being vegan and this and that? And and it's always, you know, my son especially is just, because he's just older and he's just, he he's, you know, he's just a little bit more aware of like what's really going on in the world. And, and he's even more, he's just so proud and happy to be a vegan kid. So it's really a wonderful gift that you're giving. I absolutely love what you've just said. Yeah. I'm going with the superhero thing. I love that. That is beautiful to hear that. It's just, that's, that's brilliant. That's exactly what I want to hear. Oh, good. Well, you're doing the right thing. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming on here today. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's, it's an honor. To wonderful. Have wonderful. We'll have to, I'll have to, We'll have to reconnect in some way and you know collaborate in the future and keep each other you know abreast of what all we're doing and i'm looking forward to connecting with all everybody who's um you know popped up here on this live i want to find them on instagram so please help me find them and so that yes. i can connect with them as well so we can quickly show you a couple of the people in the chat i what? think if adam's up. got it up. just quickly yeah so uh so, so we've defender got of animals. Defender of Animals, who has got the clothing range. The Grumpy Vegan Granddad. Who is yes. operators as well. So yeah. thank you, Dan, for keeping and the And he's chat very nice and close clean. to a thousand subscribers as he well. Very close, well done. Uh, yeah. I'm Easy Vegan. And uh, he's got 140 now. Wow. He's very new to YouTube and he's really doing well. Yeah, he is. And then we've got Zactivist. Uh, as and well this as well here yeah. yay i'm gonna it's so funny i'm such i'm such a you know gen xer where like the millennials are really into youtube and i i need to get on board and maybe do my own thing sometime um i i do these silly characters i used to be a sketch comedy person and so i have these characters in my head and so i might start a youtube channel around like veganism nutrition and silliness that would be great would be cool. but if i do i will i will definitely connect connect with everybody i say also michelle Lowe, who's oh, here she um Yagi. yes mm -hmm. she has a very good perspective because that she has the psychological aspect of Ooh. with her with her job as well so Ooh. she has a very different as i like watching her videos for that reason she does a lot of really interesting videos actually so definitely check her out as well right all right i will be yes. um so current with all the youtube <laughs> now so uh yeah thank you for everyone yes. tuning in I hope you enjoyed it. Thank well. you for the mods. And um, yeah, we look forward to the next live in the future. And peace too. Bye. Peace. Bye. Bye. Thank you.